Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We're continuing our Pac-12 football predictions today, and our next team is coming off a nine-win season, but they struggled towards the end, losing three of their last four. They returned nine returning starters, including their quarterback, so we'll have to see if they can remain a factor in this Pac-12 South. They are the Utah Utes. Utah has been a strong Pac-12 South title contender these past three years. In 2014, they went 9-4. In 2015, they went 10-3 and, and saw themselves rise to number three in the country. And then last year, they also went 9-4, and four, getting their ninth win in the Foster Farms Bowl over Indiana. So this season, they're hoping to continue that success. They have nine returning starters, four on offense, five on defense. They get their quarterback in Troy Williams. He returns. Uh, so they're going to probably be another big Pac-12 South title contender this year. The only problem is they have a very tough schedule, including playing the top four teams from the Pac-12 North, uh, because in the Pac-12 they do play nine games, uh, nine conference games. So, very tough schedule, but I do think Utah will be able to remain a factor. Kyle Whittingham is doing a great job there. This will be his 13th year at Utah, so he knows what he's doing, uh, and I think Utah will remain a big factor in this Pac-12 South and could uh, potentially upset a few people. So they open up the season against North Dakota. Luckily, that's not North Dakota State. Uh, the team that always upsets those Division One schools, like last year, North Dakota State upset Iowa. Uh, a couple years ago, they upset Kansas State. So uh, luckily, they're not playing them. But North Dakota should be an easy win for uh, for Utah. Not really worried about that one. And then they get to BYU in the Holy War. Utah has won six straight in this Holy War series, including uh, the Las Vegas Bowl a couple years ago when they played BYU. They jumped out to a 28 to nothing or 35 to nothing lead. And then BYU actually crawled their way back, uh, but ended up losing 35-28. to So Utah has won six straight in this series, but all streaks must come to an end. And I am predicting a loss for Utah in this Holy War against BYU. BYU has 13 returning starters coming back, including uh, Tanner Mangum at quarterback. He's very dynamic. I feel like uh, BYU, you know, BYU is always one of those teams that gets eight or nine wins. They're very consistent. Uh, they're going to be hungry. It's at home. Uh, all the factors are pointing up for BYU this season to snap that six-game losing streak in the Holy War. Uh, so I feel pretty confident about that. But, you know, these Holy Wars have been crazy. Last year, Utah won 20-19. Uh, BYU scored late in the game and went for two to get the win, and they failed. Um, so anything can happen in the Holy War. Not saying Utah can't do it, but I feel more comfortable picking BYU for now. I feel like they'll be the better team early on in the season. And then they get San Jose State. Another easy wing, knocking out those cupcake teams early. Uh, shouldn't be much of a challenge. San Jose, San Jose State will improve a little bit. You know, a couple years ago, they did get to a bowl game. They were one of those five and seven teams that did get uh, into a bowl game, but I'm not really concerned about that for Utah. I think that'll be a win there. And then at Arizona, a team that struggled really bad last season. They went three and nine. Uh, Rich Rodriguez is going to be on the hot seat, I think, if he can't win here at Arizona. He's been there for a while. Uh, got them to the Fiesta Bowl a couple years ago, so that was that was huge. But uh, coming off a three and nine season, he's really going to need uh, some improvement or at least a few upsets to keep his job. Uh, but I'm not really concerned for Utah, even though it's on the road. I'm really not concerned uh, with that Arizona game. They do have 14 returning starters at Arizona, but I feel like Utah will be the better team uh, in this one. So they're going to be three and one going into the bye week uh, when they when they get to meet Stanford at home. This could be a potential upset. Uh, Stanford returned 16 starters. Uh, that That's always a big key for me. How many starters experience is always a big deal. Uh, that doesn't really determine uh, who wins the game, in my opinion, but that will play a huge factor in, in, in how the season goes for a certain team. So uh, Utah draws Stanford at home this year. That's going to be a close game, I think. I think Stanford, I mean, it's going to be the beginning of October. Um, we saw what happened to Stanford last year when they started October, uh, or towards the beginning of October, they got killed by Washington. Uh, but I really don't think uh, Utah is going to be able to win this game. I think Stanford's going to be the better team. Uh, in the end, Keller Christ is going to be a good quarterback, uh, continuing his success there. David Shaw's a great coach, so I'm not really going to give Utah the win there. And then at USC, a very tough game as well, a team uh, that a lot of people have getting to the college football playoff or at least winning this Pac-12 South division. Uh, it's on the road. That doesn't bode well. Even though Utah won the game last year over USC, uh, I don't think they're going to be able to make it two in a row. And uh, I'm going to give them the loss there as well. So now they're 3-3. Three and three. They're at 500. Uh, luckily, they get to go back home um, against Arizona State, a team that also struggled a little bit last year. Um, but Arizona State will be a little bit better. They're gonna, I think they have 13 returning starters this season. Uh, they usually have a very dynamic offense, so Utah's defense will have to step up. 
But uh, I don't think it's going to be much of a problem for them. I think Arizona State at home, uh, Arizona State will improve a little bit this season, I feel, uh, just based on the returning starters and based on uh, the results from last season. But I think Utah will get the win there. And keep in mind, Utah did get that Oregon transfer. Uh, speaking of Oregon and Darren Carrington, the wide receiver, uh, he was the one at Oregon that caught the game-winning pass over Utah last season, if you remember that game. Uh, so he will give the Utes a little boost, I think. But uh, it's not going to be as big as everybody thinks it's going to be. I mean, it's a great addition, considering they only had four returning starters on offense. So he will play a very big factor. But um, he's not like a quarterback or anything, you know. He's not going to like change the entire game. But it's a, it's a great addition for Utah. And so this game against Oregon on the road will be very interesting considering what he did last year against Utah and how he's playing for him. So that's going to be a fun one to watch. Um, but on the road at Oregon, a team that I think is going to improve big time from I think their 4-8 and eight record last season. Willie Taggart is coming in from uh, South Florida. So he's going to be uh, doing good there. He's going to make some uh, huge improvements. Oregon, I think, returned 17 returning starters. Uh, so they're going to be nothing like that team you saw last year when they went 4-8. and eight. They're going to be uh, relevant again. Oregon's going to be extremely relevant. And I think within a few years, Willie Taggart will build that team up uh, back to where they were a couple years ago, playing for the national title, college football playoff, or at least being a very uh, strong contender in that Pac-12 North. So um, Utah on the road at Oregon. I know they beat them really bad two years ago. Uh, that's how kind of Utah got up to that number three spot. They beat Oregon and slowly, and that's how they jumped so high in the rankings, slowly climbed their way up. Don't think that's going to happen this year. I think they're going to get the loss to Oregon there. That's going to be that. Oregon's always a tough place to play, and I just don't see Utah win that game. And then U, uh, UCLA at home, they get back-to-back -back home games against UCLA and Washington State. That's going to be huge, especially the fact that they're going into November. Um, but UCLA with Josh Rosen, like as I said before in that UCLA video, if he can stay healthy, he can easily be one of the best quarterbacks in the Pac-12, probably only behind Sam Darnold. Uh, and I think he'll make UCLA relevant again uh, compared to what they did last year. That's a tough game for Utah, and I'm going to give them the loss against UCLA. I really do feel like they're going to be the better team. Uh, they're on a mission, and um, I just don't think that, even though it's at home, I don't really feel that Utah's going to be able to compete with UCLA. A lot of that does have to do with experience. Those nine returning starters are going to end up hurting them. Um, it sounds like a lot at first, but when you split it down the middle, four on offense and five on defense, it's going to hurt a little bit. But um, I think these games that I project them to lose, they're going to keep close. So they have the potential to upset them, you know. But right now, I just feel that they're going to be able to, I think they're going to lose to UCLA. And then Washington State, a team I'm very high on, those 16 returning starters. Luke Falk at quarterback, nine returning stars on defense. Their defense is going to be much improved uh, and relevant. Uh, they get them at home this season. That's going to be huge. And I'm actually going to give Utah the win over Washington State. I feel like they will be able to get this win. And getting towards the end of the season, they haven't yet qualified for a bowl. Uh, they're only at um, four wins right now. So that they're going to be really pressing. They're going to need to win two of their last three. And I think they're going to get the win over Washington State. And then at Washington, remember last year, uh, game day was at Utah for that game. Washington versus Utah. And Utah had nearly beat Washington uh, in that game. I think they lost 31-24. to It was an exciting game. Had they beat Washington, would have probably been one of the biggest upsets in the Pac-12. Washington obviously ended up losing to USC later on, but still made the college football playoff. This year it's at Washington. Much tougher environment. Washington's still going to be a very good team. Uh, still a college football playoff contender, in my opinion. So on the road, I don't think that bodes well for the Utes. And I'm going to give them the loss here. And then Colorado, a team that Utah had to travel to last year. Like I said, Colorado shocked the heck out of everybody last year. And Colorado handled Utah pretty easily, uh, at least towards the end of the game. They kind of pulled away. And I think this year, now that it's at home, they're going to be fighting for a bowl berth. The fact they only have five wins. Um, they're going to be fighting for that bowl berth against Colorado at home. And they're going to get it. They're going to get that win over Colorado. And that's going to give Utah a 6-6 six and six record. They're going to go bowling again under Kyle Winningham. Uh, that's going to be like four straight bowls. They didn't go to a bowl in 20, uh, 2012 or 2013, so that's going to make it their fourth straight bowl game for Utah. And it's just a really tough schedule, you know? I mean, they draw the top four teams out of the Pac-12 North, you know? So that's that's a really tough schedule for them. If you marked them, if you immediately mark those down as losses, there's four losses. I obviously didn't. I gave them the win over Washington State. But they drew those four uh, teams out of the North, and like a lot of them are on the road. they got Washington's on the road, uh, Oregon's on the road, uh, they get Stanford at home, luckily, and Washington State is on. So half of them are on the road, half of them are at home. But uh, the Pac-12 North, I feel, is much more competitive 
this season in the, in the South. So, um, in terms of toss-up games, games that I feel like could go either way, the only one I could possibly see would be that BYU game in the Holy War. But right now, I feel very confident in picking the, picking the Cougars in that one. Uh, and then besides that, I really don't see any others besides maybe Stanford. But I feel like Stanford is going to be a very uh, tough contender in that North. Uh, they're going to give Washington a run for their money for sure. So we're just going to have to wait and see uh, how things go. But right now, I think Utah will return to a bowl game. A little bit of a step down considering they won nine games last season. But they will get back to a bowl game for their fourth straight year, uh, which is I think is a good season for the Utes considering how many people they lost last season. So please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. We're going to continue through our Pac-12. And we'll see you next time on the Good Iron Expert.